Hey guys, what's up? It's Six Superst here, and today I'll be reacting to episode 3 of Kimi to Boku. Now, just to preface this a little bit, I find this anime a little bit boring. I just found out that it's a comedy anime, not necessarily a romance anime, and it's slice of life. So far, there were a few good comedic moments, but so far it's just lackluster. It's not really giving me enough laughter or enjoyment, but I will continue watching this anime because I want to know what happens in the end. And I also want to know what this anime is actually about, because so far we only have the four characters plus one other character that was introduced in the previous episode, a girl. But so far, not really much that's making me feel excited about it. But I will give it the benefit of the doubt and I will continue watching the anime to see if there's anything, if it has any redeemable qualities or attributes. Anyway, without further ado, this is episode 3 of Kimi to Boku. Get a lot of cats. Who's the other one? The girl? Is it the girl? It's the girl, obviously. <laughs> Alright. Alright, so she's kissing up to him. Or maybe she just wants to be his friend. And she's such a Zunderate too. Come on, that's not gonna give you any favors. No. You're... <laughs> he seems too creepy. <laughs> okay. Yeah, she isn't actually the slightest. She's. No, obviously not. Oh my gosh. <laughs> He's so dense. <laughs> They're already telling him, giving him hints about it. <laughs> oh, so she, so she likes Shun. Okay, that's very interesting. Finally, we get to see that guy. That other character. Isn't that good though? Because this whole anime is boring. Right. Yeah, that that blonde kid that we see in the opening. One of the things that I'm really irking about the one of the things that really irk me about this show about the characters specifically is, is that there's nothing exciting about them. There's nothing about them that you would want to cheer on, right? There's nothing that makes you excited. There's nothing that makes you feel like I, I I'm I feel connected with this character. This character resonates with me. Nothing at all, because the other the the two the twins are boring. They're always like stone faced. They always seem like they're bored. Even though one of them is such an athletic kid, the Shun Shun is just you know that oblivious kid, and Kaname is just the know it all. So we need somebody to actually balance them all out. We need so we need a glue, and I hope that this kid is going to be that glue. Seriously, I, I, I really am hoping that this anime can redeem itself, because it had a very poor first two episodes, in my opinion. I don't know if anybody out there has watched this anime, and has... I mean, if you guys like this anime, and you enjoy it, then... You know, all power to you, but so far it's not doing it for me. Even even as a slice of life anime enthusiast. Alright. Wait, he's the class representative? Sitting next to Yuki. So lifeless. <laughs> what? Okay, what happened? 
Flashback, flashback. Give us a flashback. We need to know what this story is. When they were kids, probably? When they were little kids. Kindergartners. Does he remember? Okay. Yeah, I want to know that too. In his. Okay. Uh huh. <laughs> Maybe he just pushed it away from his memory. Uh, I really want to know what happened before. That's not a girl. <laughs> okay. He's definitely a ball of energy. He's definitely adding a lot of variety into the show so far. Not sure if that's a great thing. So he obviously remembers him, but doesn't want to remember him at all. So it must have caused him some kind of childhood trauma. Wait, do they have different hairstyles? But he called him by his name. He called him Yuki. Okay, I really want to know why. Why Yuki is having this selective amnesia about this kid. Who is persi persistently saying that they know each other. Okay, so something from the past again. Oh, 
Alright. So maybe it was him? Or is it possible that both of them had experiences with him? Okay. But before we continue, I just want to talk a little bit about uh, what Tachibana must, must be feeling. Because I would hate it for somebody to just completely forget about me. Somebody with whom I thought I developed a really good bond when I was a kid, right? Because if it's so vividly clear to him that he had those memories and he had those experiences and encounters with one or both of these guys and to return and see them again only for them to not remember you that must be so painful that must hurt a lot because you treasured those memories meanwhile they just didn't even consider it significant enough in their lives to remember it but then again they must have been really really young and he must have a really good memory if that were the case but still it must be so confusing and painful for him to see somebody with whom he shared such an affection, I, I guess, such an affectionate bond because he's calling him Yuki, a very affectionate nickname, and sharing all of these ex experiences and encounters that he had with whichever, whomever it was, what one of the twins or it could be both of the twins, and just being consistently shot down by, by them. <sighs> Yeah, he must be having such a, a tough time. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Maybe the twins just selectively are pushing it out of their memory or just they don't they don't want to remember that part of their lives. Or they're just really airheads. We don't know. Anyway, this uh, so far, the addition of Tachibana in the group. Well, I, I wouldn't say that he's already in the group, but the addition of Tachibana in the story is definitely making it a lot livelier, a lot more fun and interesting than what it was before. So let's continue watching it. Yeah, but why? And we still haven't um, cleared up the misunderstanding. Now he's just ignoring him because, I mean, there's no point, right? There's no point in continuously trying to jog their memory because they will refuse to remember. I, I really hate that. I, that annoys me, actually. Yeah, it makes you feel as if those memories don't, didn't even happen. What? Where did that come from? All of a sudden, what? What happened? <laughs> oh, he just awakened the beast. Uh, but no, not really. <laughs> No, it's not. Okay, so who really was it? Okay, because we're now seeing flashbacks from that time. So who was it? And why are they saying that they don't remember him? Okay, I need clarity. I need some explanations. Okay, this is definitely from before, right? This was what happened. There's the little cute... I'm not sure who it is. Yuki? Okay, so he did meet Yuki. Okay. 
German? <laughs> okay, so he was... He's a German kid. Smart kid. Okay. Okay, so it was Yuki. So they spent probably a whole summer together. And, and then he had to leave. You know, what would have been a lot helpful was if they took a picture together. Because then that would, prove the, that would provide evidence that that actually happened back when they were kids. But this was in the early 2000s. Uh, it was late 2000s, so smartphones wasn't a thing yet. Oh my gosh. He fell face first on the ground from a very tall tree. No, my gosh. That must hurt a lot. Eh? Okay, I guess kids are just very resilient, but that that must have hurt a lot. That was a that was a laceration. And I think that was a very big laceration as well. Okay, so how does this end, really? Oh. Okay. Oh, it could be Dutch, too. No, that's... Okay, that's definitely German. to do this when I was a kid too. The, the sound effect is really good. So he does remember it but doesn't want to admit that he does? Why? Is he just embarrassed? Yuki, 
人に怪我させても謝りもしないしそうなの君のことあああれ痛かったって言えば痛かったけどでも謝られたら逆に嫌だったな俺は楽しかったんだ Wait a minute. This is Yuta. Wait, right? And the one standing is Yuki. Okay, this one's a bit weird. Like, okay. <laughs> Finally, that misunderstanding has been cleared up. Colored boy. All right. All right. So that was episode three of Kimi to Boku. And I think the addition of Tachibana really gave color to this anime. And it's very refreshing to have them interact, have a, a little bit more interaction, a little bit livelier. You know, there's there's just、uh, all of them were all. We're all very,、uh, I guess you can say, very reserved. Shun was probably the, the closest to being a little bit boisterous, and Kaname is just kind of the controlling leader type, so can't really get much out of him. But having Tachibana there is a breath of fresh air. He basically made it a lot more fun and also gave us something to ponder about, to go back on, and with a flashback with Yuki. Very interesting. I wouldn't say it's. Making me feel super excited, but at the very least, we, we do have a little bit more spice and variety in this show. I'm not sure what else we're going to do or what else we're gonna have in the next few episodes. It's basically just slice of life anyway. It's fun.、Uh, there weren't a lot of comedic moments in this episode, but I really love the fact that I, I just really love having Tachibana in the group. We also have the, the girl. Uh, I don't remember what her name is, but having those two characters adds a little bit more flavor, a little bit more spice into the mix, which makes it a lot more fun、uh, to, to, to watch because just the four of them, it's so boring, to be honest. It's, it's, I mean, I like the panter, but the twins aren't really that lively. Shun isn't really that interesting. <laughs> And Kaname is, I don't know, he's, yeah, he's Kaname. So a little bit more, a little bit more fun in this one. Thank you guys for watching and see you in the next video.